While all eyes were on Louisville yesterday, there was another big horse race in progress at Wrigley Field. When Mark Grace galloped home with the winning run in the 11th, the Cubs caught the Cardinals in the standings and moved to within two lengths of the Astros in the Central Division. Today, the Cubs go for the sweep, and it's not going to be real quiet at Wrigley Field. at 16 miles per hour, but the Cubs red hot trying to sweep the St. Louis Cardinals here at Wrigley Field. Hello again, everybody. I'm Chip Carey along with Steve Stone. The Cubs have taken three straight from the St. Louis Cardinals. Stoney, and as we peek at the Central Division standings, indeed, the race is heating up. When you play in your own division, it's amazing how quickly you can gain ground. As you see, the Cubs and the Cardinals right there at 16 and 13. Unfortunately, the Houston Astros don't want to lose and they have a three-game bulge over both these teams going at it here today. And, Chip, there's a change in the lineup today for the Cubs. Yes, indeed. Kevin Ory, as you all know, has been slumping so badly. Just four hits in his last 12 games. Jose Hernandez now gets the start for the Cubs at third base. And, boy, what a timely hit he gave us yesterday in game three of the series. Well, it was Jose who got a couple of hits before the three-run homer. He tied it up. We went 11. And then that miraculous play that you saw here in the pregame. <laughs> The Cubs won it, and you couldn't ask for more excitement than we saw yesterday. And we'll talk more about that play in just a few minutes. But really, the interesting story about today's game, the pitching matchup. For the Cardinals, a guy we don't know an awful lot about, Cliff Polite, will be pitching for the St. Louis team. And this guy is really a rags-to-riches story for the Redbirds. Here's a guy that started in Class A last year, went to spring training as a non-roster invitee. Take a look at what he's done right here, and you'd have to figure his odds were short. He was drafted way down in the draft. He's only 5'11". He does get the ball over the plate, and he changes speeds well. So we don't know much about him. We'll enjoy watching him pitch, and enjoying Kevin Tappany pitch has become a real ritual here at Wrigley Field. He hasn't lost a ball game here at the friendly confines, and certainly we hope his good work in April continues in the month of May. After a tough start, Kevin Tappany is 4-0 and throwing the ball as well as anybody in the league. Take a look at his career at Wrigley Field, and you'll see that he hasn't given up very much. And if the Cubs do win this one today, for the first time since 1972, they will have swept the Cardinals four straight in the friendly confines. And I can't wait. I'm excited. I am, too. Should be a lot of fun. A chilly day at the ballpark, but the Cubs red hot. We'll see if they can keep it up after our national anthem. Back at chilly Wrigley Field with Steve Stone, Chip Carey, and our entire WGN crew. How about the way... The Cubs won that ball game yesterday. A very stunned Mark McGuire. As you see, he was deked by Tom Gamboa. Everybody in the ballpark thought Mark McGuire, McGuire was going to see Mark Grace put the brakes on. He didn't, and the Cubs win the ball game. Well, I think Mark McGuire did exactly what Mark Grace would have done, and that is try to read the third base coach. In this case, the third base coach said, whoa. Mark said, go. And he scored the run. And what an emotional way to, to finish the ball game. It was a perfect relay throw by Clayton. And you have to feel badly for McGuire. He made the right play. He was looking at the third base coach. And even Grace defended that play as well. Well, if you look at it, you'll see Marrero well out in front of home plate. And that's what got him the early collision. And unfortunately for him, Mark Grace knocks the ball right out of the glove. Not only was Tommy bringing me, but Tommy was bringing me with some enthusiasm, like, let's go. Mark looked down to make sure that he touched the third base bag, and when he looked back up and saw the stop sign, he felt that he just had, <coughs> he couldn't stop at that point. I didn't purposely do it. I didn't see the stop sign, and, uh, you know, I'm glad I didn't see it. Apparently, you know, uh, Mark McGuire saw the hold sign and went ahead and cut, which what, what was a perfect throw from Clayton to the plate, and where Mark uh, would have been out by a fairly good margin when McGuire held the ball, uh, being surprised that Grace ran through the sign, the belated attempt gave Mark just enough time to get a piece of uh, Marrero before he could secure the ball, and we ended up getting a win. And I feel kind of guilty, Stoney, not using Dave Johnson's track call. And down the stretch he comes <laughs> as the Cubs win the ball game. 
in 11 innings. And here is the Cardinal lineup. They try to snap a three-game losing streak. Clayton and the Shields have been held in check so far. Mark McGuire has walked a lot. He does have two home runs in the series. Then Langford, Jordan Gaetti, Gant Marrero, and Cliff Polite, the Cardinal pitcher. And the Pepsi defense for Jim Riggleman and the Cubs. Rodriguez, Brown, and Sosa left to right. Hernandez, Blauser, Morandini, and Grace in the infield. A battery of Scott Service and Kevin Tappany. And there you see some fine numbers, especially an ERA down at 414. And has not lost a decision at Wrigley Field, has Tappany. 7-0, a 175 earned run average in this ballpark. And could approach a milestone today. He's five strikeouts away from 1,000 in his major league career. Paul Schreiber, your home plate umpire. And then you see the rest of the crew. Another foggy, misty, very cold day at the ballpark. But the crowd very enthusiastic. A total sellout. Some standing room only seats on Beanie Baby Day. Now, a lot of you would look at that 414 ERA and say, how could I say it's a very good ERA? If you remember his first game disaster, you'll realize how well he's had to pitch to get it down to 414. And Royce Clayton with his third hit of the series singles through the hole on the left side and he's aboard to lead off the Cardinal first that's how he started the game yesterday was thrown out trying to steal and every time Clayton got on yesterday he at least made an attempt to steal and so you have to be careful with him he's stolen eight bases been caught three times Scott service has been excellent behind the plate and is well above league average at throwing out would be base stealers. So here's Delano to Shields. He's two for 13 in the series. The top two men in the Cardinal lineup are combined four for 28 and have scored just three runs. So much of their offense is predicated on getting these guys on ahead of Mark McGuire, who then is able to swing and blast away for the St. Louisans. But they have not been able to do much of that. And Tappity misses with his first to the Cardinal second baseman. One ball. No strikes. Two guys to look for in the lineup today that have hurt Kevin Tappany, Mark McGuire, and Gary Gaetti. Gaetti hasn't had much of an average, but he's hit four home runs off Kevin. And McGuire hits home runs off everyone to 360 off Kevin. Runner not going. The pitch, two balls, no strikes. Those same two Cardinal one-two hitters, in addition, Steve, have walked only three times in this series. That's been one of the reasons, as you look at Steve Traxel, why the Cubs are 3-0 in this series. Oh, hitters pitch here on the 2-0. Runner doesn't go. The pitch pops foul. And back into the mist and the fog, and the fans will have to juggle the Beanie Babies as they battle for the baseball. Here's who's hot on the Cardinals. Brian Jordan, Delano DeShields, and Mark McGuire. But in this series, the Cubs have consistently pitched around Big Mac. Any times he's had an opportunity to hurt him, they've said, I'll tell you what, big guy, we're going to put you on first base, and we're going to make Ray Langford beat us. Yeah, McGuire's walked seven times in the series so far. And Langford has hit reasonably well, but only has one run batted in in the series. And i got to figure right now that you'll have to see Clayton going. And so if you're Kevin Tappany, I'd go to the slide step and get it home quickly. The 2-1, not going, swing and a miss. Well, Tony La Russa has uncharacteristically planted Clayton at first base. Maybe he remembers the soft footing in the first inning yesterday, and things hardened up as the game went along, so he's figuring if they make it soft, I'll just wait to run. Ah, but the ground crew may have messed him up today. It doesn't look nearly as wet as yesterday and that pitch is high now he will be running we would think three and two well now you get the opportunity to strike him out throw him out the shields has fanned 14 times however that's at 99 at bat so he doesn't strike out often but if you throw that high heat you can throw it by him upstairs and maybe service can gun down plate Royce a good lead at first three balls two strikes to Delano to shields here it is runner goes pitch fouled away The Cubs and Cardinals tied in the central trying to catch the red hot Houston Astros. They beat Kurt Schilling last night again in Philadelphia. Houston's won eight consecutive ball games. And Delino DeShields was a terrific basketball player in his home state of Delaware. 
and shows baseball as a career. Three and two again. The runner goes swinging a miss, and service can't hang on. And the shield strikes out. There's the first out of the ball game. Tappany needs four strikeouts for a thousand. Runner at second for McGuire. This is the changeup, and Scott Service has a hard time handling it. And so it goes as stolen base number nine. And from the high scoreboard camera, we'll take a look at a good jump by Clayton. But as you can see, the ball pops away from service. So Royce Clayton moves up in scoring position. Now again, you've got first base open. You can't give in to McGuire. If you put him on first, you put him on first. You just don't want to see a two-run bomb early. McGuire's two hits in the series both left the ballpark. And it's happening inside corner. Bell high, strike one. McGuire, 12 homers, 38 runs batted in, hitting 319 on the year. Clayton, a good lead at second. One ball, one strike. This McGuire. is the walking man. I like that. 34 of them, and you can understand why they wouldn't take too many chances with Mark McGuire. The 1 1. He didn't offer two balls in his strike. You have Lankford and Jordan next. Royce Clayton singled to open the game for St. Louis. The Shield struck out, and now McGuire ahead in the count, two balls and a strike. Tappany set to go and the pitch three and one I think what I would try here if I'm Kevin Tappany is I'm going to another slider I'm going to make sure that it's either on the corner or outside and if I don't throw a strike it's not going to be the end of the world remember this is the man that pitched around Tony Gwynn and Ken Caminiti to get to Greg Vaughn so he could get him out so McGuire draws the walk his eighth walk in the series and speaking of Ken Caminiti, he was sent back from their road trip early. He's got a thigh injury, and that would be a huge loss. Remember, Chip, we were saying that the only thing that could stop down the Padres is the age and the injuries in that ball club. And so far, it's been Wally Joyner and now Ken Caminiti. And Tony Gwynn, remember, was hit by that Mark Clark pitch. He was banged up for a couple of days. So you're right. The Padres might start to come back to earth a little bit, especially if they lose their all-star third baseman, Ken Caminiti. So two on one out and here's the man the Cardinals need to come through in a big spot Ray Langford Tappany gets ahead of him a good pitch to Langford is the straight change it's the same pitch that struck out Delano to Shields Kevin who likes to keep the ball down would be better served keeping the fastball up on Langford but you can throw the change up low and away and you can throw it by him off the end of his bat nothing in two. Speaking of the Padres, they're in Florida and they trail the Marlins 1-0 in the top of the fifth inning. The Giants beating up on Atlanta and Tom Glavin 7-2 in the bottom of the fourth inning. Arizona and Montreal tied at one. The Dodgers lead the Pirates 5-0 after three. Mets and Rockies are scoreless. It's raining in Milwaukee. No balls, two strikes to Langford. Strike out here would be nice. Or a ground ball double play, the pitch. Weak ground ball to the mound. Tappany's going to go to second. Out there, and that's the only one they get. And Royce Clayton went around third base. It would have been nice to be able to throw behind him, but of course, Jeff Blauser is making sure of one. And when Clayton went around third, he just slipped almost into the coach's box. And the Cardinals have had all kinds of problems in this series putting on the brakes. Here's a good play by Kevin Tappany. He gets the force out at second. Now, Blauser's looking at third, and by this point, Clayton has rounded third. And watch. Feet out from under him. <laughs> They're going to have to tie some anchors to I these boys. I was Man, they have overslid a couple of times, and it's cost them big time. But we're not out of trouble yet. Brian Jordan, four for nine in the series. First pitch hacking, fouls it away. Jordan, a very dangerous player. 333 average, three homers, 15 runs batted in. Remember, he injured himself a little bit in the first game of this series, opening night here in Chicago, trying to 
play out a, a ground ball out. But appears to be in decent enough shape to play the last two here in Chicago. Nothing in one to him. Runners at the corners, two down. Nothing and two. And well, that's a good sign that Paul Schreiber is going to give Kevin Tampany a couple inches on the outside corner. Kevin will file that away. When he needs a big pitch, he's going to go back out there and see just how far that outside corner will extend for Mr. Schreiber today. Tap ready to go. The 0-2 pitch. Weak ground ball to the right side. Morandini covers it up, throws him out the side, retired. No runs, one hit, two left after a half inning. Cardinals nothing. Cubs coming up. In their half of the first, now in the bottom half, Jim Riggleman with his Pepsi lineup tries to win his fourth consecutive game over St. Louis. Brant Brown, Mickey Morandini, Sammy Sosa, a career-high tying 10-game hit streak and the game-winning RBI last night. Mark Grace scored that winning run. Then it's Henry Rodriguez, Jeff Blauser, Jose Hernandez for the slumping Kevin Ory. Scott Service hits eighth and Tappany pitches and bats ninth. The defense for Tony La Russa, St. Louis Cardinals, Gant, Lankford, and Jordan, a talented outfield left to right. In the infield, the venerable Gary Gaetti, Royce Clayton, Delano DeShields, and Mark McGuire, and a battery of Eli Marrero and Cliff Polite. And there you see some pretty good numbers in this, his sixth start. Not bad for a non-roster invitee to spring training. A man who started last year at the Class A level at Prince William. Made it up as high as AAA. And this year got an opportunity with all of the injuries to the starting rotation. He's made the most of that opportunity and he's got a winning record. There's Sammy, one of yesterday's heroes. He'd like a, to be one again today as Polite, the young 54th round draft pick of the Cardinals, takes the mound for the sixth time this season. He faces Brant Brown leading off. One ball. No strikes to Brown, hitting a hefty 350 with two home runs and 10 runs batted in. And a strike. Talking with Tom Pagnazzi, the veteran Cardinal catcher about Polite. Has a lot of poise, not a big guy, just 5'11", 185 pounds. That's a big guy. <laughs> well, that's, I'm sorry. He's a pretty big guy, <laughs> but he's sneaky fast. <laughs> he's got pretty good stuff. Brown, right at guy. Hit the ball hard, but Gaiety spoiled the fun. One out. Well, even at 39, if you have fast hands, you can play in close. And in this series, Gary Gaiety has shown us that not only at bat, but in the field, those fast hands work awfully well. And he takes what would have been a double away from Brant Brown. Well, he has a pretty good curveball to go at that sneaky fast fastball and a changeup. Morandini, the hitter. Mickey carries a two-game hit streak. Boy, he's really made the Cardinals pay in this series. Five for nine with five runs batted in. Last year, Morandini had was it 17 RBIs at the All-Star break, 15 RBIs at the All-Star break. He's already got 18, and we're in the first week of May. There was that changeup, but he missed with it. By the way, bad news in Philly. Houston has scored three times in the fourth. They lead the Phillies three to nothing. In the game yesterday, a most unusual occurrence. Mike Lieberthal went over toward the dugout. Kurt Schilling on the mound. He caught a pop-up with runners at second and third and an out. That was the second out. He dropped the ball in the dugout, and former Cub coach Chuck Cotier tossed it back to him. Hit hard but foul into the Cardinal bullpen. And it almost looked like Cotier was trying to do it so as nobody would notice. The problem was the umpiring crew did notice Chuck trying to fool them with the old flip the ball out of the dugout trick. <laughs> uh, well, the rule says it cost you two bases and two men scored on the play. And Houston won four to one and beat Kurt Schilling. Who's had no luck at all. Morandini has no luck with Polite that time. He strikes out and quickly two up, two down. I'd like to send along birthday greetings to Lindsay Lerner and Hillary Spector celebrating at Beanie Baby Day today at the ballpark. And we hope all the kids got the Beanie Babies that they were so looking forward to receiving today. Daisy the cow never looked better. Two up, two down. Here's Sammy trying to extend 
a career hit streak today. And there you see what he's done. And the most amazing part of that hitting streak is the fact that Sammy has struck out fewer times than I can remember. Just five. Plus, he is consistently ahead in the count. And has drawn five walks during that span. Has hit three home runs, knocked in eight. And once again, he's ahead of the pitcher, 2-0. and oh, And now, Polite has got to come to him. So Sammy pick out a good one, preferably in her half, and hit it hard. 2-0. Oh. What a cut. 2-1. and one. Boy, it's a much different game, as you know, from the mound when you're ahead two balls, no strikes as a hitter. Or as a pitcher, when you're ahead, no balls, two strikes. And Sosa still in the driver's seat. Two and one. Swung on, belts it. Deep to the left. Back goes Gant. At the track. At the wall. It's gone into the basket. Seven RBI number 20 and that friendly basket. Sammy just hits it far enough with the wind blowing in. The wind trying to knock it down, but Gant went back. All he could do is look up. And Sammy put the Cubs on top with home run number seven, RBI number 20. And the hit streak continues. And I think a Cardinal fan caught the ball because he or she threw it back into the field of play, and one of the ball boys had to run out and get it. Hadaway, Sammy. One ball, no strikes to Mark Grace, whose blazing speed helped win the game yesterday. Blazing speed, daring base running, and running through a stop sign. But it all paid dividends. Polite recovers and fires a strike. Two and one. It's the fifth home run Polite's given up this year. And watch it again. It's the curveball. It hangs out over the plate. A tisket, a tasket. Sammy hits it in the basket. I like it. Three balls and a strike. How far did he hit that one? And for Southwest Airlines, it went 364. Daisy the cow, happy feet. Or hooks. <laughs> Two hooves up. <laughs> Three and two to Mark Grace. I'll try to convince a little lady before the game who was cherishing her Daisy the Cow beanie baby that it might have mad cow disease. She should give it to me. But <laughs> she wasn't buying any of that. She was cherishing her beanie baby. Payoff pitch to Grace. Off the end of his bat foul and out of play. And speaking of hooping it, had a great time last night at the Bozo Ball down at the Navy Pier. Our thanks to everybody putting on that great event. And uh, Steve was dateless, we are sorry to report. <laughs> the Duchess of York had a prior engagement. Mark Grace now has an eight-game hitting streak himself. And isn't it funny, Steve, what a little home cooking can do for you? When we came back from the West Coast, the Cubs weren't hitting anything. Now they've broken out against the Cardinals. Well, it's a combination of home cooking, certainly, and the fact that you're not facing the Andy Ashby's and Kevin Brown's and Chad Hope Parks of the world. And with all due respect to the Cardinals starting rotation, they've really had a tough go of it. The ERA at 506 and the Cub hitters, quality hitters, making the most of it. Henry Rodriguez looks to get in on the fun himself now. His average at 247, eight homers, 19 batted in. But as you saw in the series, he hasn't had a whole lot of luck. But maybe today's the day for him as well. And Polite misses high, 2-0. Oh. If Polite continues to stay behind, it's going to be a lucky day for most of the Cub hitters because although you might describe his fastball as sneaky fast, they reserve that for guys that don't throw very hard. And if you have to throw it behind, you got a problem. He took the fastball, two balls and a strike. Good news now from Philly. Bob Abreu just hit a two-run double for the Phillies. They have now tied the Astros 3-3, heading to the fifth. But the killer bees, Vigio Bell and Bagwell, are due up. Two and one. And 
Henry takes another strike. It's two and two to Cliff Polite, a native St. Louisan. Went to Vianney High School in the Metro St. Louis area. In fact, his father was a member of the Cardinals for many a year. Got a call up to the Major League, spent about a week there, didn't get in the game, however. But was a minor league pitcher. Rodriguez stays alive, broke his bat, however. I would think those Houstons would have to lose here eventually. They've won nine of their last ten, including eight in a row. They're eight and four at home. That you can understand. The Dome, a very tough place to win. But on the road, Houston is 11 and six. And with that in mind, those same fearsome Astros will be here Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon for a two-game swing. And then San Francisco comes to town for four. And there are plenty of seats available for those six games. So on this 10-game homestand, with the Cubs putting everything together, a couple of real good ball clubs coming to town and come out to the friendly confines and watch them. Two and two again to Henry. That almost hit him. Three balls, two strikes. Well, now this sets into motion the blazing speed of Mark Grace will be off to the races with the pitch. <laughs> and he could score all the way from first on a triple. I think I can. I think I can. Three balls, two strikes. He's not going to be too happy with us after we talk about his speed like that. There he goes. The pitch swung on, popped up. Into the mist, into the fog. Langford and Gant converge. Langford's got it, falls to his knees, and the side is retired. One run, two hits, one left after one. Sammy Sosa's seventh homer makes it one to nothing Cubs. Cub Killer leads off the Cardinals second, but Tappany fooled him with that pitch, nothing and one. Gaiety had the line of the year so far. Well, the second line of the year, I guess he said that after I retire, I may come back and play at Wrigley Field for free. He hit so well here, but after having his 10-game hit streak snapped yesterday, I had he 0 for his last six. We'll see a fan throwing back the Sammy home run ball, but it looks to be the old switcheroo. The scuffed up baseball coming back on the field to play and the home run ball being kept as a souvenir. Ron Gant rifles it down the left field line and falls behind 0 and 1. Well Kevin Tappany will allow Gant to continue to do that. It looks really good. The fans get excited. It goes to strike one and then he's going to keep the ball low and away and try to force Gant to pull it. Just when he looks out there he's going to bust him in. Off the end of his bat. And he's in an 0-2 hole. Gant has not had much fun in the series. Just one for ten. A double and an RBI, however. St. Louis comes in second in the league in hitting at 286. Runs scored, however. They're number one at 173. But the Cubs have done a nice job of holding down this very potent offense. The Cardinals were averaging over six runs a game. Before coming to Chicago, they've scored a grand total of 11 runs in the first three games. One ball, two strikes to Gantz. He checked it. And again, I think that goes back to what we've been saying pretty consistently. It's always exciting for Cardinal fans to see Mark McGuire hit those mammoth home runs when you have to pitch to him. Tony LaRusse's team is going to pay dividends. So far, the Cubs have been able to pitch around him, and the Cardinals haven't come up with a big hit when they've needed it. Well, from my standpoint, it's always exciting to see Mark McGuire trot the first base with a walk and let somebody else on this team beat you. Overall, the Cardinals have struggled away from Bush Memorial Stadium. The Cubs are hoping to continue those struggles. Two and two to Gantz. Late swing, and he just missed a double. Well, one of the reasons why the Cubs have done such a good job in this series is when the starter has had a problem, the bullpen just comes in and slams the door. Yesterday it was Mark Pichotta, Bob Patterson, Rod Beck, and Terry Adams with two brilliant innings of relief. And when they came in the game, that was it. Bye bye, no more runs. And there is the talented pen. Nice play by Renee Latchman off the hop, and he makes a friend behind the Cub dugout. And the count two and two. If you want to strike out Gant, you can throw a high fastball. Make sure it's inside. You can throw it right by him. Got it. 
second strikeout of the game. Tap, but he needs three of them for a thousand lifetime. Well, if you don't want to go with the high fastball, you go with the low change. And you get Ron Gant for the 17th time. Good change up by Tappany. And that pitch for him has been a godsend since he quit using the split finger fastball. That surgically repaired hand, not able to get the fingers apart wide enough, and that change up has gotten better and better. And as you see, Tapp approaching that milestone with every Cardinal hitter. Eli Marrero, the very talented young catcher standing in, hitting 276, a homer and an RBI. One to nothing, comes lead it here in the second inning. A Sammy Sosa home run. In the bottom half of the first off, young right-hander Cliff Polites. Now Marrero hasn't shown us he hits anything to the right side, so you have to play him to pull. Now the way, one and two. He'll go back up the middle. So you have to be ready if you're Kevin Tappany. But all things being equal, he will pull the ball. And with that in mind, the third baseman comes into play. And the third baseman today, Jose Hernandez. Kevin Ory getting a day off, and he's going to work a couple days with Jeff Pentland to try to smooth out that stroke. Missed with a change that time. Two balls, two strikes. Todd Zeal just hit a three-run bomb, and the Pirates are getting hammered. Eight to nothing. Full count now to the Cardinal catcher. Guerrero has shown a good eye, a lot of patience for a very young hitter. He's only fanned twice this year, and this is his 30th at bat. He does hit the ball to the right side that time. Long run for Sosa, still going at the wall. Makes the grab, and that retires the side. Tappany gets him three up, three down in the second, and the Cubs still lead one to nothing. like a very happy little girl got her beanie baby today and a faithful cup fan on hand hoping the cubbies can sweep the cardinals four straight here at beautiful albeit frosty wrigley field sammy sosa's home run the difference thus far and another sellout crowd second in a row today it was beanie baby day yesterday it was saturday Cubs and Cardinals wrapping up this four game set this afternoon. Here's Blauser to lead it off, followed by Hernandez and Scott Service against Polite. You just, do you subscribe, Steve, to the pitcher has the advantage the first couple of matchups with a, with a batter? Well, I think he has a big advantage. Not necessarily will he always shut them down, but if you've never seen a pitcher, you can get all the scouting reports you want, but until you've seen him 60 feet, six inches away, you don't know how the fastball moves, how the curveball breaks. This guy's got a pretty good fastball despite his five foot, 11 inch stature, which is very tall. The large man, a, an, an enormous man. In Lilliput, perhaps, the 2 1 <laughs> is outside. Three balls and a strike. Well, Jeff's got his family in town, and so he would like to show him some. Sunday spirit today. One run not near enough against this potent Cardinal offense. And he draws the walk. And you know it's cold when Jeff Blauser wears batting gloves. He's always up there barehanded. He's got the gloves on both hands and draws the walk. Leading off the Cubs second. 18th walk of the year for Blauser. Yesterday, Jose Hernandez with the Cubs down three zip tied up the ball game and sent us to 11. And that's when the Sammy Mark Grace show took over. But if not for Jose Hernandez, we never get to the 11. So his hot bat has him in the lineup. And he takes a strike. Jose, as you know, a very versatile player, can play all the outfield spots, can play virtually everywhere in the infield. Excellent glove man. And it'll be interesting to see how he hits if he gets everyday playing time for a while. Had a good cut there, but his spine nothing in two. Well, Chip, I know you're going to find this hard to believe that a number two seed has never lost to a number seven seed in the Eastern Conference in the NBA. But it just happened. New York has right? defeated Miami. 
Way to go, Alonzo. Good job. <laughs> Unbelievable. Outside to Jose. Well, I guess it's Reggie Miller and the Pacers against Spike Lee and his New York Knicks in round two. 98-81 final. I guess the Bulls get to beat up on Charlotte later on tonight. Or is it this afternoon, I guess? One and two. Jose bouncing ball left side. Good stop. Clayton throw the second. It's in time. Boy, that guy covers an awful lot of ground at shortstop. Well, that is the acrobatic Royce Clayton. Reminiscent of another shortstop here at Wrigley Field by the name of Don Kessinger, who patented the jump pass in the hole. And that's exactly what happened. You can only get one from the high scoreboard angle. You'll see a very good play by Clayton. And they get the lead runner. And this is a good hit and run situation. You want to stay out of the double play. Scott Service, an excellent hit and run man. He can go to right and right center with the best of them. And his bat coming to life. As the pitch misses outside, one ball, no strike. Scott, three for eight in the series with a homer, seven runs batted in on the year. He's played outstanding defense for this Cub team. He's called several very good games, especially the ones with Kerry Wood. He hits the ball to the right side. Let's see if the Cardinals can turn it. Clayton, what a turn at second. He leaps over Hernandez to complete the relay to first. And the Cubs are out 4-6-3 on the twin killing. On we go to the third. One to nothing Cubs. Brought the Vermont weather with them. Well, they're Cub fans from the Green Mountains. A state full of sap. I ain't touching that one. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. I'm glad you didn't say that plural. Here's Polite. No, great maple syrup from up in that area. Absolutely. And my first partner, Ernie Johnson Sr., hopefully watching the game today down in Crabapple, Georgia. He's a native Vermonter. Former Major League pitcher on the 1957 Milwaukee Braves. The Ivy is getting confused. It thinks it's supposed to come out, but it's not quite sure. Polite strikes out. That's number three in the game, and Tap needs two for that Major League milestone. Well, as we said yesterday, fog makes the Ivy grow, I think. Well, it loves the last four days, then, because it's been foggy every day. And you see it once again. So the Cubs apparently love to play shrouded in fog. And let's hope it continues. Five straight retired by Tampany into the top of the Cardinal order we go. Royce Clayton has the only St. Louis hit, but he was stranded at third in the first. The Cardinals have had a lot of scoring opportunities in this series. In fact, yesterday they went one for 13 with runners in scoring position. And it cost them the game. One ball, one strike. Can't bet the number one horse today. The race was yesterday. 1-1. One, one. He tries a punt. It's a good one. Tappany tried to barehand it. Clayton's two for two. Pretty good bunt by Royce Clayton. When you've got that kind of speed, you take a look at where the third baseman sets up. But if you make a great bunt, and Brett Butler always said it, I don't care if the third baseman's in. If I make a good bunt, I'm going to beat it out. Kevin knows it's a do-or-die pickup. Tries to barehand it, and he cannot make the play. So Clayton aboard for the second time. Why do you think the bunt is, has become almost a lost art in baseball? I think because it's hard to do. I think guys don't want to work on it. To shields the hitter. He takes a strike. How much of a role does artificial surface play in that? Well, very much so. The, obviously, there's a lot of ballparks with the artificial surface. It becomes even more difficult to bunt. But for leadoff hitters that are looking for on base percentage, that's a terrific play. Even Barry Bonds bunted the other day, foiling the ship. That would have driven Ted Williams nuts to see a slugger like Barry Bonds bunting. Swing the bat, he would say. Sure. <laughs> Lou Boudreaux invented that shift. Hopefully he's watching the game today. Ball and a strike, one on, one out for the Cardinals, who trail one to nothing. One and two. 
And we hope that Lou is looking on and harking back to the days when Lou as then a 24 year old manager player won for the Cleveland Indians the World Series was a great player and a wonderful manager and quite a broadcaster in his day. The Giants just picked up a couple of runs. They are pounding Atlanta. Rich Aurelia just hit a two run homer in the sixth. They lead the Braves nine to two. In the sixth inning at the Ted. Pitch to the shield. Swung on. Hammered toward left. Henry on the run. Still chucking. Still coming. It's falls foul. And the shield stays alive. Still raining in Milwaukee. The Reds and the Brewers are set to tangle today. Colorado trailing the Mets now one to nothing that game moves to the sixth inning New York has lost six consecutive games they've hit the 500 mark at 13 and 13 now Dodgers eight Pirates nothing after five and the Phillies and Astros still tied at three good time for a change up again one and two fisted foul there it was. He got it in on the hands. Now, if he keeps one low and away from the shields, he's most likely going to get it. Tappany is 4-0 and in his last five starts. Yep. You know, Chip, they might be hesitant to run with Clayton here because they'd open first base again and they'd just walk McGuire. That's probably a big part of the problem. I agree with you. One and two. Change again. Hit in the air. Down the line. Foul. Tuesday and Wednesday the Astros are in town and the pitching matchups Jose Lima off to a great start Mark Clark will try to right his ship and then Wednesday afternoon Shane Reynolds and Kerry Wood will have that game for you right back here on WGN one and two again to the Shields he hangs right in there. Well, again, Royce Clayton hanging steadfastly at first base. Tony La Russa is going to force Kevin Tappany to somehow face Mark McGuire. It hasn't happened much in the series. Certainly not in the last couple of days. Four walks yesterday, three on Friday, and one today. Again, the pitch. Missed low. Two balls, two strikes. Over in the American League, Yankees leading at Kansas City, one to nothing after three. Tampa Bay hammering Cleveland, six three after five innings of work. Texas trails at Boston, two to one. Here the two two to Delano, foul back to the screen. A good battle here. And the pitch count starting to mount for Kevin Tampany. Baltimore has Mike Mussina on the mound, just activated off the disabled list today after having those warts removed. And he is pitching a brilliant game. He's leading Minnesota one to nothing. That game moves to the seventh now. Again, Clayton anchored at first. The two-two. Full count. Well, here will be the test to see exactly what they want to do. Last time in a similar situation, they ran with Clayton. The shield struck out. But Clayton stole second and then they opened first base and Mark McGuire took yet another in a series of walks. Clayton measures off the lead not going swung on belted towards center Brown drifts back has room. He's got it two down Clayton tries to tag here comes the relay it's not in time again they open up first base and we'll see if that's a heads up play or not. We don't mind him going to second, although he represents a tying run. And normally that would be a terrific play. You know that Brant Brown has to catch this one backing up. Clayton tags at first base. And then he makes it easily in the second after the relay. But now, with first base open again, let's see what Kevin Tappany does with Big Mac. McGuire walked his first time. Ripping that time, he fouled it back. And Mark knows that for the first time, 
in three games he got a pitch in his wheelhouse but he fouled it straight back <laughs> you're in range my friend you're in range no balls had a strike to McGuire a tying run at second one and one well, one thing about McGuire, as we showed you, he leads the National League in walks. He is not going to expand his strike zone. Well, I just keep testing that outside corner and see if maybe he'll swing at one. Hasn't so far. Two balls and a strike. Needs one home run for a milestone in his career. And be the fastest man in Major League history. To 400 home runs, according to the at bat totals. A very heady company on that list. The 2 1. Three balls and a strike. You can understand Clayton's thinking. Although first he's opening first base, he's saying to McGuire, look, a base hit is going to score a run. But it hasn't worked out that way in this series. Three and one the count. McGuire walks yet again. Well, I like the strategy. You just keep walking McGuire and keep forcing the men behind him to try to beat you. And so far, they've been unable to do that. Langford, four for 12 in the series. Again, only one RBI for the Cardinal cleanup man in the series. Kevin Ory looking on today, getting the bench perspective from this contest. Lankford looks away. Jim Ruggleman talking to Kerry Wood. Then you see what happens if you don't have a 98 mile an hour fastball, then you just don't challenge Mark McGuire. If you have one, like you have, young fella, then you just throw it by him. One ball, no strikes. You've got Lankford, then you have Jordan here in the Cardinal third. But they trail it by a run. He missed again. Two balls, no strikes. A walk would load the bases for Jordan. I think you'd rather pitch to Langford than Jordan. And you can throw him in a good spot. If you keep it high and away, he'll lift your fly ball to left or left center. Hit hard toward left. Henry coming on. He's coming. Can't make the play. Rounding third. And scoring is Clayton. And the Cardinals finally get a two out hit and tie the game. Well, Kevin got the pitch he wanted. Unfortunately, Langford hit it off the end of the bat instead of hitting it hard enough to get it to Henry. It's RBI number 16 for Ray Langford. And the Cardinals have tied it at one. So Langford with his 16th RBI runners at first and second now. Well, this pitch was probably a little lower than Kevin Tappany would have wanted. And it was squibbed off the end of the bat. And Henry having to respect the power of Langford can't get to it. So Jordan an RBI chance. But he takes a strike. Brett Boone has just knocked in a run for Cincinnati as they finally gotten underway in Milwaukee. Reds leading one to nothing. This inning has been set up by the bunt. Out of play on two. As Chip told you, it's going to become a dying art here in the major leagues. Years ago, a lot of hitters had the ability to do that, especially smaller guys who ran real well. Tappany has Jordan on the ropes here. The 0-2. One and two now. Tapp thought he had him punched out, but no such luck. Tappany's walked two. He has struck out three. He's given up three hits.
runners have big leads the pitch it's two and two well if a base hit is hard enough McGuire's going to have a hard time scoring from second base they think Jordan is going to hit the ball to right or right center field there's a ton of room down the line and left so you don't want to throw him anything off speed Fastball belted left center field. Brown on the run. Can he catch up to it? He can. He's got it. And the inning is over. One run, two hits, two left. It's a 1 1 game. The Cow Beanie Baby, day one of the most popular promotions in Cup history, and they came from all corners of Chicago at all hours of the night to ensure their prize today. Huh? You know, I got here at 4.30 this morning. I got up at 2 o'clock. Um, and I won't have to do housework for a month for doing this. <laughs> a nice job. Hope you enjoy your Beanie Baby today. And Kevin Tappany in a 1-1 game leads it off. Sammy Sosa's home run, the Cub run, back in the first inning. Pleasure of meeting Scott Rogers, the vice president of Thai Incorporated. Folks that put together the Beanie Babies. Well, what a great company that has turned out to be. And kids love those Beanie Babies. And we thank Scott and all the folks with Thai Incorporated for the wonderful promotion today. Tappany is going down short. And there's one out. Well, I would keep that card, Chip, because with a five and a half month old daughter. You're going to be needing all the Beanie Babies that you can get here in the not too distant future. It's not the five and a half month old I'm worried about. It's the 32 year old mom that I'm worried about that wants all the Beanie Babies. But they are very, very much appreciated. And we have received our gigantic Beanie Baby up in the booth. Mine looks a lot like you, however, as Brent Brown. Bows it back to the screen. This is a good looking. This is an excellent beanie These baby. These are the big beanie babies. Too. The king size. We have the blue in your case and red in my case halo. Very appropriate for me. I, I think for me too. <laughs> yeah, these are the uh, parents of all the beanie babies. Yeah, beanie mom and dad. No balls and two strikes to Brant Brown. Right back where it came from. He singles on the 0-2 pitch. Boy, for a guy that didn't know much about playing the outfield, Grant Brown certainly has done a great job in center field and has done a super job leading off, too. Pretty aggressive swing, 0-2, as he takes it right back up the middle. He hit the ball like a bullet the first time up, but Gary Gaddy was there to spear it. So, two at bats, two hard hits, and one for two. Now Mickey Morandini, who struck out his first time, is the Cub hitter. 1-1 game in the third. One ball, no strikes. Checking the stats scoreboard here. No Turner Ward has crashed through the outfield fence. Check that out. One ball, no strikes to Mickey. The pitch is strike. Is that in Pittsburgh? I'm checking. Slow modem, slow modem. Well, it's Sunday. That happens. But you have a cure for it, right? Yes, try Starbucks. Sometimes I am speechless, I must admit. One ball, one strike to Morandini. Yeah, the game is in Pittsburgh. The Dodgers are leading 10 to nothing. Well, having been out there in the outfield, I don't know how you crashed through that fence, but that must have been quite a collision. One and one. Swung out, belted, toward right. Back goes Jordan at the track, at the wall. It's off the ivy. Brown 
second. On his way to third. They're going to green light it. Here comes the shield relay. Not in time. It's a triple. Morandini halfway down the line. And the Cubs lead it 2-1. to one. He has just killed the Cardinals in this series. RBI number 19 for Mickey Morandini. And Brant Brown hustling, beat the play at the plate. That one came an eyelash from his third home run of the year. And for a man who hit one all of last year, Mickey Morandini has found some strength here in Chicago. Jordan gets trapped too close to the wall, and then the ball gets away. Then it's up to Ray Langford to get it back in time, and he doesn't get it back near in time. Here comes Brant Brown, who is already at second, and he wants to beat the relay. And Tom Gamboa says, go get him. You're faster than Mark Grace. I know you can make it, <laughs> and make it he does. So, Morandini's second triple of the year, a three-game hit streak. He is six for 11, six RBIs in this series. And now the Cubs with a one-run lead, and their slugger Sammy Sosa standing in. Let's see how carefully they pitch to him now. Way outside. Well, this is where Sammy used to have trouble. This is where he's really improved this year. With a runner at third and less than two outs, Sammy has driven home some big runs. This used to be one of his trouble spots. Not so anymore. He's become a much better situational hitter. Let's get him home, Sammy. Low 2 0. Oh. Mark Loretta from Milwaukee just hit an RBI double. They've tied the Reds 1 1. Brett Tomko on the hill for Cincinnati. Atlanta has come charging back. They trail the Giants now 9 6 after 6 at Turner Field in Atlanta. The 2 0. Oh, he laid off. Three balls, no strikes. Mark Grace waiting on deck. Now, Sammy does have the 3 0 green light. This is where you have to be careful to pick out a good pitch. And if the pitcher does stay away, take it. You've got two other pitches. He laid off. So the Cardinals pitch Sosa very carefully now. And with Mark Grace, the hitter, they would love to get the ground ball double play, which would get him out of this third inning. Sosa draws the second for equal off. And now Grace with an eight-game hitting streak extended in the first inning. Well, we haven't seen a hit and run in this situation, but this is a good time for it. Sammy has stolen seven bases. If you run him on the ground ball, you score the run. Morandini a lead from third, the pitch. Runner doesn't go, it's taken low. One ball, no strike. The Cubs have broken through with the go-ahead run here in the third inning. Back foul our way. Runner in third and less than two outs. Mark Grace has gotten the job done. They're at the corners with one down. He spits at that pitch away. Two and one. Tom Gamboa flashing the signs in that third base coaching box. He's been a busy man these last few games. And that's what you like. You don't want your third base coach to be the Maytag repairman. He wants a lot of visitors over there. The 2-1. Three balls and a strike. Well, now I send Sammy for sure. You know that Mark Grace has got a pretty good eye. If it is a strike, odds are he will make contact. Here's a man who's only fanned nine times in 112 at bats. But Sammy has to watch a quick move to first base. A good lead over there. He broke early. The pitch swung on line toward left. It's going to be caught by Gant. Tagging from third is Morandini. The throw comes through and not in time. Cubs have a three to one lead. Give Grace his 14th RBI on the sacrifice fly. Morandini scores. Sosa remains at first. 
Good piece of base running by Mickey Morandini with Sammy going from a high scoreboard camera. You see Morandini go back to the bag. He knows that Gant does not have a strong arm. So Gant catches it away from his throwing hand side and can't get the ball away. They try a pickoff and it's thrown wild. And Sosa to second. That's a big help. A base hit now would add another run to the tally. Well, I'm sure that'll be ruled an error on the pitcher. I would think so. So Sammy at second. It is E1, and it's the first for Philippe. And Reed, line drive, base hit, center field. Here comes Sammy around third. He is going to score. The Cubs have scored three runs in the third. And Polite's error costs him another run. It's 4-1, to one, and the Cardinal bullpen starts to stir. Well, it's like a parade here. You get Sammy with his 20th run batted in. Now Henry comes through with his 20th run batted in. Morandini, trying not to be undone, has driven in his 19th. And watch Henry go back up the middle with this. The air costs the run. Sammy comes home to score. And everything looking bright at Foggy Wrigley Field. And a meeting on the mound for the Cardinals as Tony La Russa tries to settle down as young right-hander. This Cardinal team, at the moment, you would have to say their pitching is their biggest weakness. You know they're going to score a lot of runs, but especially so, Steve, when you consider that eight of their 11 pitchers on their staff did not spend the full season with the Cardinals last year, and Morris and Alan Bennis are both hurt, and of course they lost Andy Bennis because of contract problems. You're not going to win any pennants 10 to 9 every day. So somewhere they're going to have to get some consistent starting pitching. Or that bullpen is going to start to falter. And right now with a staff ERA over five, the Cubs are taking advantage of it. And the big inning is what has killed the Cardinals in this series and of late. This is the 20th time in 30 games that the Cardinals have given up a three run or greater inning. Three runs have scored here in the Cubs third on three hits and the throwing error by the pitcher has loomed very large as well. Bowser evens the count makes the count I should say two balls no strikes as that pitch missed away. Jeff walked his first time up and was forced out back in the Cubs second inning. Henry with his second hit of the series. And there is a strike. Phillies and Astros still tied at three in the bottom of the sixth inning. Milwaukee won, Cincinnati won in the second inning. The Pirates getting hammered 10 to nothing by the Dodgers. And the Cubs winning today. Lowser may have swung a ball three. Two balls, two strikes. Got him swinging, and that retires the side. But the Cubs pick up three runs, three hits, one air, one left. We head to the fourth. It's a 4 1 Cub lead. It's a 4 to 1 game. It feels like 41 degrees today at Wrigley Field. But the Cubs have the lead after three as Gary Gaetti stands in against Kevin Tappany. Gaetti. Bounced to third his first time up. Had his 10-game hitting streak snapped yesterday. He's getting ready for Jay Leno to conduct. Take me out to the ball game. Oh, he won't be as good as you. I know that already. One ball, one strike. Well, he won't wear the big glasses. I know that. And I think he'll do a fine job. The pressure's on, I'm telling you. You have set a new standard. Gaiety wraps it foul past third. And he's behind one. Dorothy Waldschmidt's family from Sterling, Collinsville, Rock Island, and Sycamore, Illinois, and Davenport, Iowa, here to celebrate her 70th birthday today. John and Shirley Powell at the ballpark celebrating their seventh anniversary. And Rita Mullins, the mayor of Palatine, is at the ballpark. 
They missed out on the Beanie Babies, she said, but maybe next year. She got to the gate too late. Or maybe in September when we have yet another Beanie Baby Day. It'll be a swan named Grace, by the way. Gaiety pops it back. Service gives chase, but he has no play. Kevin Tappany has a nice, comfortable lead, if you can ever call a three-run lead against this Cardinal team comfortable. They are thumpers. Well, the Cubs so far have been able to pitch around Mark McGuire without an awful lot of damage. The 2-2 two -two to Gaetti. He fouls it away. Reds have taken a one-run lead over Milwaukee, two to one now. Now, if the Philadelphias will help out, and Houston will see that eight-game winning streak come to pass, there would be ground to be gained today, Pally. Gaetti, did he check it? He did. Three balls, two strikes. Tappany ready. Ooh, that just missed. And Gaetti draws the leadoff walk here. In the fourth, Steve, let's see who's cleaning up in baseball. Brought to you by Hoover. Well, lately, the Atlanta Braves with the best home record, followed very closely by our Cubs. The St. Louis Cardinals doing very well. The Padres, the Dodgers, all doing well at home. Ron Gant, a strikeout victim his first time up. He has home run power. Uh, takes ball one. And without that terrible motorcycle accident, what would the career of Ron Gant look like? Because he looked to be one of the premier power hitters in the National League before tearing up his leg. I think it's a miracle that he's back and playing as effectively as he's playing. Cincinnati took a chance with him. Pretty good year for Jim Bowden in the Reds, then chose to test the free agent market. Found a home here in St. Louis, but so far has not lived up to that big contract. Kevin got that one over. Two balls and a strike. tore up a contract that they had made or given to Gantz because of that injury. And it has not been the same for him. You're right. Jim Bowden took a chance because he signed him before he knew if Gantz was going to be able to come back and play. So it cost him a half year's salary and then he got a productive player. But just briefly, just one season. And then he moved on. Now time call. You can tell Ron Gant has spent a lot of time in the weight room. In fact, a lot of people speculate maybe a little too much time because sometimes inside he's so big and bulky that he ties himself up. And he walks. So now all of a sudden, Tap can't find the strike zone. Two on, nobody out. But the catcher, Morero, and the pitcher, Polite, are due next. Well, most uncharacteristic wildness. The two pitch arounds to McGuire you don't worry about but the walk to Gaetti and Gant cause for concern as the vulture Phil Regan goes to the mound to settle down Kevin Tappany you're not worried about the bullpen at this point as Tappany has been able to extricate himself from situations just like this and he's looking for the ground ball you know they're not going to butt in this situation not with Polite coming up, but it appears that Polite's going to be taken down. So maybe a different set of circumstances for Tony La Russa. And with a pinch hitter in the on deck circle, he just might butt with Marrero. Cubs playing back at the corners. Double play depth up the middle. No bunt, swing, and a pop up. Can anybody catch up? Lauser drifting out. Henry coming on. Henry makes the grab. There's the first big out. 
And now Tom Lampkin grabs a bat and will be announced as the pinch hitter. So that helps. And Polite is history. Kevin Tappany stays inside on Marrero and he breaks the bat. Just shatters it. Leaving Marrero with just the handle. And an 0 for 2 from the Southwest Airlines Plainview camera. Take a look at not much of a swing by Marrero as he gets jammed. Lampkin comes on at 253. One for two. That pinch hit was a home run. So Polite works just three innings, gives up four runs, a home run ball, two walks, two strikeouts. Bouncing ball up the middle. Morandini steps on the back, calls the first double play. What a play by Morandini. And the Cardinals out of luck again in the fourth. They had them first and second, nobody out. And again, they can't come through. Comes leading it four to one. And yes, indeed, get out the brooms, we hope. At the end of today's play. And Cubs fans, Saturday, May 9th, this Dunkin' Imperial Yo-Yo Day compliments of Scala's preferred, the Italian beef and sausage at Wrigley Field. First 10,000 kids, 13 and under, attending the Cubs-Giants game on May 9th will receive a limited edition Dunkin' Imperial Yo-Yo. Tickets stop by the Wrigley Field box office or call 312-831-CUBS. New Cardinal pitcher, right-hander John Frascatore, who's trying to right his ship. He has been very inconsistent for them so far this year, but pitched pretty well in relief earlier in the series. Well, there you look at the numbers, 840 ERA, 0-2 record on for the 13th time, and he threw three and a third innings in the opening game of the series on Thursday. Gave up no runs and just four hits. Jose Hernandez greets him and takes a strike. Jose 0 for 1, bounced into a second inning four out. Cardinals would love to see Frascatore harken back to the way he threw last year when he was awfully tough. 248 ERA and 59 appearances. High pop into the mist, into the clouds, into the fog. Into the picture comes Lampert. One out. Jose retired and now Scott Service. Bounced into a 4-6-3 double play. A great turn by Royce Clayton, the Cardinal shortstop. Pretty good piece of pitching by Kevin Tappany to get out of that last inning. First and second, nobody out. And before you know it, three pitches later, that's it. And the Reds on top of the Brew Crew. Another big hit for Steins. Service takes a strike. I grew up in St. Louis and was so fortunate to be able to watch Ozzy Smith play at shortstop for the Cardinals. Royce Clayton will never make Cardinal fans forget Ozzy Smith, but they are certainly going to remember Royce Clayton. And that's not meant as a knock on Royce at all. He's a terrific player. And it's very, very difficult to try to fill those shoes of Ozzy Smith defensively in St. Louis, but he's done a great job of doing it. Well, eventually there's going to have to be somebody that replaces Cal Ripken. And the same thing in St. Louis when Royce Clayton then battling for playing time with Ozzie Smith with Ozzie nearing the end of his career it became a difficult situation. Royce handled it well. And both of those gentlemen have handled their respective teams pretty well in the early going. They have identical record. Service stays alive. Two balls, two strikes. Kevin Tappany waiting on deck. We're in the fourth. The Cubs lead it four to one. Trying to sweep the Cardinals in a four-game series for the first time since July of 1972. Bouncing ball to the second baseman. The shields in up over. Yeah. 1972. What a gallon of gas cost in 1972. If you were in San Francisco at the time, it was 24 cents because I was pitching for the Giants, and we used to have gas wars. And they kept going lower, and I remember one point they reached 24 cents. Those were the days. Uh, well, let me see. I was six and eight that year. The days weren't all that great. <laughs> How about the nights? Eh, a little better, I'm sure. Here's Tappany <laughs> for one. 
He takes low. One ball, no strikes. as a Cub hitter. And he's paid to punch him out himself. One and two now. Eric Davis has hit another home run for Baltimore today. Boy, what a story that continues to be. Orioles leading Minnesota two to nothing behind Mike Mussina today. Hey, how about the comeback by Davis last year to come back and play after undergoing that chemotherapy having his cancer removed from his body what a just an amazing story and to be very productive for the Orioles down the stretch well, he's an amazing guy Rascatori works a one two three cup four. on to the fifth we go it's still four to one Chicago After four with Steve Stone, Chip Carey back at Wrigley Field. Kevin Tappany, Stoney really showing his veteran savvy out on the mound. He's gotten off the hook a couple of times with some very smart pitching. And he's got a three-run lead. Hopefully that will continue. But Kevin, being a veteran, didn't panic in that inning. Phil Regan went to the mound, and Kevin got out of it with three pitches. Cardinals have the top of their order due up here, and Mark McGuire, you know, will hit third. The Cubs have done a pretty good job of keeping the top two Cardinal batters off base and they've been able to pitch around McGuire all series long. McGuire has walked nine times the last two and a half games and if that continues that was going to be in good shape. Clayton's in good shape. He's ahead in the count. Two balls. No strikes. He had two hits in the series coming into today's play and as you saw is two for two so far on the afternoon. The Phillies have taken the lead four to three Desi Relaford another former Mariner with the go ahead RBI that's popped up short right Morandini and Sosa give chase it'll be Sammy and right and the leadoff man is retired one out in the St. Louis fifth for Delano to shield he is 0 for two he is struck out and has fly to center and it's two for 15 in the series. lead is San Diego one to nothing in the bottom of the eighth inning they have the bases loaded with one man out the Padres without Ken Caminiti as Steve told you earlier he was sent home with a quadriceps problem but managed only five hits today checking what Cliff Floyd has done he's hit nine home runs already and the Chicago area product is really coming of age in South Florida Floyd today a base hit He's one for four. Single hitting 269 now on the Cal Fish. Two and one, two to Shields. Now two and two. We can't see the sailboats. We can't see the power boats. We can't see the water for crying out loud. We need to get this fog out of here. An off day tomorrow. Maybe that'll be just what the doctor ordered. Then the Astros in town for two, then the Giants next weekend. Three balls, two strikes, two to Shields. And he fouls it away. And as Steve mentioned, a lot of good seats still available for all of those games against the Astros and the Giants. Come on out to the friendly confines and see the Red Hot Cubs. That ball rifled into the gap in left center field. The Shields has at least two. Brown plays it cleanly, and Delano stops at second. One out, first base, however, still open for McGuire. Well, now the question is, do you pitch to McGuire? Or do you pitch around him as Delano to Shields hits this ball awfully hard to the opposite field? The Shields with his eighth double of the year. And as it rattles around, Delano coasts into second, but opens up first base. McGuire's walked twice today. But give him credit, he sticks to his game plan. And Tappany 
gets ahead of it. McGuire has walked 36 times. He has struck out 30 times on the year. And when he's connected, he has hit the ball very hard. But count even one and one. The Shields, the lead from second. Swarm on, belted. Will it stay fair? It will not. Well, that's one of the reasons why you like to pitch around Mark McGuire, because every time he puts a bat on it, you risk having him take it well out of the yard. And from the Southwest Plainview camera, we'll take a look at Mark McGuire in that powerful swing. Charlie Relliford on the line, and it hooks foul. A one two. Way outside. Two balls, two strikes. Kevin would have to go away from his strength to go to McGuire's weakness, the high fastball. Let's see if he does that just one time. Tries to get it up and in. The 2-2 two -two to Big Mac. Full count. He threw him the changeup. It was away. And Kevin Tappany wants this one. But Mark McGuire with a lot of patience. As you see it, this one is outside. Service had to reach for it. And if you do that, you're not going to get the call. Three and two to McGuire, who asks for time. Meanwhile, the Giants are having all kinds of trouble with Atlanta. They led that game nine to two. Atlanta has pulled to within a run nine to eight now. And they're still batting in the eight. The pitch to McGuire. Straight three call outside corner. Strikeout number 999 in Tappany's career. Mark McGuire thought he had drawn his third walk of the day, his tenth of the last three days, and instead, Scott Service puts the glove up. And on ball four, McGuire goes down. So that's the fourth strikeout. Another look. Southwest Plainview camera take a look at a pitch just off the corner as you see clearly there and that's why Mark McGuire was unhappy and there is a Southwest Airlines Plainview camera I at top Wrigley Field one ball no strikes to Langford who has the lone Cardinal RBI I pop into left Henry on the run in the corner still running slipping falling makes the grab slams into the wall let's see if he's all right he looks like he's a little gimpy, but he made the play, and the Cardinals are retired in the fifth. Well, you don't think Billy Williams is telling Mr. Rodriguez how to play left field, do you? That I think he's telling him, look, it's a lot easier if you use your feet instead of catching the ball on your knees, and that's what Henry did. He slipped. He was actually falling down, and he was able to make the catch before banging into the padding down there. But nonetheless, it wasn't artistic, but it was effective as Henry made the play. And aloha to you. Hope the weather is nice in Hawaii today. A little chilly here on Chicago's north side, but the Cubs leading 4-1 to one as we hit the bottom of the fifth inning. Grant Brown will lead it off. Grant scored ahead of Mickey Morandini's triple back in the third inning. He's behind nothing and two to Mr. Frascatori, who is rediscovering his magic here in Chicago. Michael Tucker threw the Braves to within a run. And the Giants now bad in the top of the ninth. Brown reaching for that ball will pop up. Clayton. Makes the out one down.
Mickey Moore and Dini the hitter now with a modest three game hit streak, but he has really hurt the Cardinals in the series. He's six for 11 with six RBIs in the series. The problem here for Jordan, he gets caught too close to the wall, and this ball bounces by him, and Mickey Morandini is off to the races. Grant Brown scoring, and Morandini driving in his 19th. Frascatori off the stretch. One ball, no strikes. Dini's career high in runs batted in was 49 back with the Phillies in 95. The way he's been hitting, he might have that or close to it by the All-Star break. But he's always been a very, very solid glove man. He's only committed 50 errors in his big league career, which is eight years old. Bouncing ball right side. McGuire will flip to the pitch of covering. And quickly two outs in the Cubs fifth. Has set down five in a row, but a new challenge for him now is Sammy Sosa, the hitter. Sosa homered in the first. Sammy in the first inning. Just far enough to reach the basket. But it's his seventh and 20th driven in, and it put the Cubs on top. One to nothing in the first. He's also walked today and has scored twice. One ball, no strikes. The wind really starting to pick up now. At game time, it was blowing out of the north at 16 miles an hour, but all the pennants starched atop the center field scoreboard now. Home run cut, missed it. One and one. Marlins have hung on to beat San Diego one to nothing. Andy Ashby took the tough luck loss for the Padres. Not quite as effective with Ken Caminiti out of that lineup. They had but five hits today. And two and one to Sammy. The Dodgers lead the Pirates 10-4 in the top of the ninth. The Mets over Colorado 3-1 bottom of the eighth. Cincinnati pounding Milwaukee five to one after three now. Two and one to Sammy. Swung on, broken bat pop, shallow left. Gant coming on, still coming, still coming. Gant foul ground, Gant back to play. Well, you can tell that Ron Gant has been around this ballpark a time or two because as he raced over, he realized that he was running toward the bullpen mounds and he dropped his head to see just exactly where he was. The ball dropped in front of him, but he comes away unscathed and Sammy has another life. Astros are still trailing at Philadelphia. Four to three, the Phillies lead. In the bottom of the seventh inning, Scott Rowland is in the box with an insurance run at second base for the Phillies. This hasn't been the happiest series for Tony La Russa. As he looks on, with the look of a man who's just had a bad brought work. The 2-2. Two -two. Took a shot at right and fouled it away. I have had a bad bratwurst, and that is what I look like. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Steve Stone, Chip Carey at the ballpark in Chicago. Cubs leading 4-1 to one in the bottom of the fifth inning. Bases empty for Sammy Sosa, and the 2-2 got him swing. One of the rare times he's chased the pitch out of the strike zone. And Rascatori is perfect in his two innings of work. On we go to the sixth with the Cubs in front by three runs. The Cardinals sixth. He is 0 for 2 today. Kevin Tappany needs one strikeout for number 1,000 in his big league career on a chilly day at Wrigley Field. Tappany also undefeated in this ballpark as a member of the Cubs. He's seven and oh lifetime. A hitters pitch here, two balls, no strikes. And he hits it hard toward left. Nobody's gonna catch that one, at least not in the ballpark. It's four to two. Four 
fifth home run for Jordan. His 16th RBI, his fifth hit of the series, and the Cup lead trimmed in half. For Kevin Tappany, just the fifth he's given up. In now 43 innings of work. So that cuts into the Cub lead. Well, if you're going to give them up, give them up without walking people, at least. And from the street, the fans throw the ball back. Whoever that is, we ought to sign them up. They've got a cannon for an arm. Yes, but that is a use and abuse baseball, not the one that was hit out of the ballpark. And that sends the bullpen to work. And it's Terry Mulholland. And there's Brian Jordan, the home run hitter for the Redbirds. Gary Gaetti, long a Cub tormentor, now stands in in a count of 1-0. Redbird bullpen busy, too. Oh, he had a home run cut, and he found it back. Let's take a look at the home run swing of Brian Jordan. And now that he's healthy, he is a huge addition to this team. One ball, one strike. It's two and one. Yaeti had his 10 game hitting streak snapped yesterday. He walked his last time up, and he's even the count two balls, two strikes. I've got Tampany for 103 pitches. Unofficially in the ball game. Well, he struggled some in the first inning, had some problems again in the third. A few more problems in the fourth. That's why the pitches have piled up. They only won one, two, three, and that was back in the second. Gaiety pops that up. Will the wind blow it back into play? The Cubs give chase near the Cardinal dugout, and it's out of reach. Scott Rowland comes through with a big RBI. And the Phillies now lead five to three in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, you better bring your quilts, your down jackets, your leather jackets, your mittens, your muckalucks, whatever you've got to stay warm. Toward third, Jose, good glove, good arm. no doubt that Jose Hernandez at third can play with the best of them and once he gets a glove on it there's nobody going to outrun that arm. He backhands it plants the back foot and from the left field camera we'll take a look at a very slick fielding third baseman and a bullet of a throw. One in one out base is empty for Ron Gantz. One ball no strengths. Gantz struck out in the Cardinals second walked in the fourth. Kevin Tappany, pitch count mounting. Cubs would love to get him through this St. Louis sixth. I think if they get him through the sixth, that might be about it. He'll be around the 120 pitch mark. Maybe a touch higher, depending on how cooperative Ron Gant and Eli Marrero happen to be. Two and one. Marrero's been very cooperative. He's over two. Would be due up after that. Four to two, Cubs lead it. We're in the sixth inning. Hit hard, and that is a fair ball into the Cub bullpen. And Ron Gant with a one-out double. I got to think that Phil Regan and Jim Riggleman now taking a long, hard look at Kevin Tappany. Because there's a... A little movement taken off the pitches now as Ron Gant takes it down the line. Charlie Relliford says yes indeed it is a fair ball. It went over the bag and as you can see clearly fair by that angle. And he's in with a double. So Marrero the batter. It's a 4-2 game but the tying run in the batter's box. John Mabry in the on deck circle. That doesn't mean he's going to be announced. That just means that he's swinging a bat. He's the only other pure left-hand hitter that they have. Hey, there's Summerlin on Beanie Baby Day. And there's one of the Beanie Babies. And she likes the Beanie Babies. 
can you blame her? She's only human. One ball, no strikes. Foul tipped back. She even likes the cold weather, too, which is strange for a kid from Florida. She also has a great hold of your wife Susan's hair. She's good at pulling hair. We already know that. <laughs> Hi, Sus. Yours is next. We'll have to put her on your shoulders and let her rip a few. I don't have that much. It feels really good. It's like a scalp massage, I promise. <laughs> one, one. Two balls and a strike. Tap playing with a little cardinal fire here in the sixth inning. Well, it just could be that regardless of the resolution of this at bat, they're going to go to Mulholland if Mabry does come in. Ripped hard, center field right at Brown, but look how well he played that ball. The catch, the tag. He will advance, but two down. Well, that ball was hit right on the button, and outfielders will tell you that the hardest pitch to judge is the one that is hit straight at you. But Brown made that play look very, very easy. Well, now that Mabry has announced the ball in the court of Jim Riggleman to see what he wants to do, Brand Brown with the wind blowing straight in has plenty of room to make this catch, and Ron Gant comes over to third base. Well, you do have Mabry announced the Cardinals out of pure left-hand hitters. They do, however, have switch hitters Willie McGee and David Howard available for them. If you come with Mulholland, you could sacrifice Mabry, but then you have Pagnazzi, Hunter, McGee, or Howard deal with. So they'll go with Mabry and Tappany here. Mabry hitting 260. First opportunity to pinch hit this year. He hits the ball a ton. Deep toward right. That ball is out of here. May have waited one hitter too long. And the Cardinals have tied the game in the sixth. One swing of the bat. John Mabry hits his third home run of the year. He's driven in 11. His first pinch hit is a big two-run homer. And just like that, we've got a brand new game. A 4-4 score. And at the top of the order we go, Royce Clayton. One ball, no strikes. Mabry, there was no doubt about that ball. He really creamed it. And the wind pushing it toward right. It cleared the fence by plenty. Ball and a strike to Clayton, who has been a very pesky hitter today. Dave Parker, the hitting coach, giving his protege a hug and watch it again. Here's the game tying home run. Two in this inning. And the reaction of Ron Gant. Very happy Cardinal. I would think that if Kevin Tappany wants to at least be in line to pick up a win by getting out of this inning. He'll have to retire Clayton. If he doesn't, it will be Mulholland and DeShield. That ball hit hard, hit high, hit deep toward left. But the wind will knock that one down. Henry's there. He's got it. And the inning is over. But John Mabry pinch hit. Two out, two run homer. Ties the game after five and a half at Wrigley. A disgruntled Cub battery. Of Kevin Tappany, Scott Service. John Mabry just tied the game with a two run homer. And game one of the series starter, Mark Petkaisek, now on to pitch relief. Well, Petkaisek didn't have much in game one. And the Cubs are hoping that that continues. He's normally a sinker baller, but he had all kinds of problems finding the plate. In fact, he lasted two thirds of an inning, gave up five runs on four hits. A fine job by John Frascatore. Two perfect innings to keep the Cardinals in the game. The game now tied at four, so it's up to the heart of the order. With Grace Rodriguez and Blouse. Mark looks away, one and one. Grace has had plenty of luck against the Redbird right hand. It handcuffs McGuire, but he makes a good play. One out. 
You know, McGuire has shown himself to be a pretty competent first baseman in this series. He doesn't always make the play look as pretty as Mark Grace, but he does make the play effectively. And we'll take another look at it as Big Mac knocks it down, stays right with it, knows he has time, and he makes a good solid talk to Pet Kaiser. Henry Rodriguez, the Cup batter. Henry won for two with an RBI today. That was his 20th of the year. That came in the three run Cup third inning. The Cardinals struck for three themselves in the top half of the sixth. A strike. Looks like it's going to be Terry Mulholland coming into the ball game. And if the Cubs do get a run here, they could still salvage the fifth win of the year for Kevin Tappany. Old foul pass Dan Madison, the Cubs' first base coach. And Henry in a quick two-strike hole. Two strikes. Well, after that start by Petkaisic, he only lasted two thirds of an inning. It was almost as if he suspected his arm or his back or his leg. Something looked like it was bothering him in that game. Well, he's had some bad back problems. That pitch hammered into right, but he got under it a bit. Jordan slows at the warning track, and there's out number two. But the Cardinals with somewhat of a depleted pen would like to see a good effort out of him and he's already lasted as long as he lasted in his start and it is getting a little chilly around Wrigley Field his home run hitting Brian Jordan shows you what the temperatures feel like Jeff Blauser the hitter with two down don't forget the seventh inning stretch guest con conductor today NBC talk show host Jay Leno will do the honors. He's in town filming the show this week. And Bowser pops it up behind first. The Shields and McGuire. It'll be the Cardinals' second baseman. He's got it. And the Kaisek works a one, two, three, sixth inning. The Cubs have been retired in order the last three times up. On to the seventh. We go in a tie game. Delano to Shields takes strike one from Terry Mulholland. Who's the new Cub pitcher? Manny Alexander. The new Cub shortstop in the double switch. Alexander bats ninth in the Chicago lineup. And the Shields fouls it back 0-2. And, and Mulholland has been pretty good this year. 172 ERA. On for the 11th time. One start. And he's thrown the ball exceptionally well. And this is outside. One and two. One man in this lineup that has given him a lot of trouble is Ron Gant. Five home runs against Terry Mulholland. Let's not worry about him until the ninth inning or the eighth inning. One and two to Delano DeShields. Mark McGuire waiting on deck. Ray Langford to follow. We're in the seventh inning. Jay Leno warming up. In the press box somewhere, we're sure the pitch is high. Yeah, he's in the Wrigley Field green room. John Baldwin tells us. I didn't know we had one of those. Full count, three and two. Last thing you want to do is walk this guy with McGuire waiting next. And no right-hander in the pen. A payoff pitch. It's one of the things that the Shields has done in this series. He hasn't been that much of a force offensively with an average dropping from 395 to the 350s, but he spoiled a lot of good pitches. Like that one. Well, that's one of the big improvements that he's made under Dave Parker, who's really helped Delano to Shields. Now, the Shields had a good year last year at 295, but this year he's hitting with a lot more power, following through more with his swing. There's the Cobra. And there's ball four to the Cardinal leadoff man. Never a good idea with the big man on deck. But he's not on deck anymore. He's in the batter's box. And now you're going to have to pitch McGuire very, very carefully. Runner at first, nobody out. McGuire has walked 
twice and was called out on a very questionable pitch back in the fifth inning. These two guys hooked up in the American League. McGuire is 167 again. And Terry not afraid to challenge him. Nothing in one. Well, Terry throws inside to right-handers. And more times than not, he throws inside and up to the right-handers. And this is exactly where it is. Terry knows where to stay. He ties up the big man inside. Now they look outside. Peppers the glove high. One ball, one strike. Well, I think when Terry goes to get him, and we talked about that matchup in the American League, when Terry goes to get him, it's going to be up and in. One and one. One and two. And Mac looks like he had a pitch to hit and he missed it. He's not going to catch up to it upstairs. So stay up, stay in, and we'll wave goodbye. One ball, two strikes. Got him swinging. Terry Mulholland just goes, this time with a curveball, and he gets him. McGuire, one of the few chances to swing, and no contact. So the runner at first for Ray Langford is one for three. He flails and misses. Our senior producer, director of Cubs baseball, is Arnie Harris. Today's game produced by John Walgren. Our associate producer is Pete Toma, and the coordinating producer of Cubs baseball is Kim Fields. It's a 4-4 game in the St. Louis 7. Remember, Terry has a great move to first base, and the Shields is getting no lead at all. That's one of the big advantages you get. Normally an advantage even with a left hander on the mound. But with Terry on the mound, you can't afford to get any kind of lead because he'll pick you off in a heartbeat. Way high with that pitch. Two balls and a strike. Paul Holland gets the first call out of the cup pen. Pen that's been used a lot in this series by the Cubs, but it's been used very effectively. As only Kerry Wood has been able to go seven innings in a starting role. And that was in the opening game of the series. And there he is. He'll pitch in the second game against Houston. Two balls, two strikes to the Cardinal. Cleanup man and center fielder Ray Langford. A double play would be very nice right here. A fly ball, deep center field. Brown back edge of the track. Has it. There's two down. Well, the Cardinals have tremendous power, and the wind is blowing straight across today. They've hit a couple of balls to the deepest part of the ballpark in center field, but the wind has batted them down. And this is one very, very strong team. You see the win, and but for that win, there would have been a couple more home runs today. And that man doesn't worry about the win. He hasn't had a chance to swing too often in this series. Well, this man beat the breeze. Brian Jordan, he hit a solo home run in the sixth inning. That was the first that the Cardinals, first off three that the Cardinals scored in the sixth inning. Jeff Jenkins has hit a solo home run for Milwaukee. It's now 5-3 in the fourth. They say that kid looks like Brett Favre. Well, he's a number one draft choice that came up when Jaha went down. Jordan rips that ball into center field. Brown playing very deep. Streaking toward third is the shield. Brown boots it. And the Cardinals are going to take the lead. That's the first misplay the young man has made in center field. And this one a costly one. It allows a run to score. And the Shields might be hurt tripping on those stairs. We've seen that a lot. For whatever reason, guys get excited after scoring a run. They come down those stairs and their feet go out from under them. And Delano De Shields scoring, and there he gets congratulations and takes the slide. Watch the play again, and Brant Brown just takes his eye. You can see his head. He was looking up to see where DeShields is, and that's all it takes in this league, folks. We isolate on DeShields, 
And when he sees the ball go awry, he keeps on going, and he's got tremendous speed. So the Cardinals get a gift run. They take a 5-4 lead here in the seventh on the air by Brown, and the leadoff walk comes back to haunt Terry Mulholland. Gary Gaetti, the batter. He's behind nothing in one. And he's behind nothing in two. So here's Mr. Leno, who's going to have to rally the troops from a run behind, at least, here in the home half of the seventh when it rolls around. We're looking forward to spending some time with Jay as the act progresses here. Cardinals trying to avoid the sweep. The 0-2 pitch line drive right field base hits going to score another run. What an at bat by Gaetti. He'll challenge Sosa's arm and he'll beat the play with a sliding double. Well, that's why Gary Gaetti has been a winning player for many years. He's a situational hitter who knows that you look away in RBI situations and more times than not, you're going to get that pitch out there. And here's a dead full hitter who just takes the ball into right field for a double, drives in run number 10, and watch a good piece of hitting by Gaetti. Good extension on the pitch away. Gary Gaetti can flat out do it. So Gant will be intentionally walked here with two out. Gaetti, a cup killer, back in good graces today. Gant will draw the intentional walk from Terry Mulholland. But really, the key play in this game took place in the sixth inning, the Mabry Tappany confrontation. The decision to keep Tapp in to face the left hand hitter hurt the Cubs, for with one pitch, he hits the two run home. And the Cubs, who had had the lead almost the entire day, saw it slip away. And now it's up to the offense to come back. But first, Kevin Terry Mulholland has got to get out of this inning. But he's got to face a tough hitter, and Marrero's hit a couple of pitches hard today. But is 0 for 3. He's hit the ball in the air all three times. The Cardinals have a two-run lead. It's 6 to 4 in the seventh. He tried to stop it, fouled it off. Nothing in one. Philly has beaten Houston. That now a final. Wayne Gomes beat Sean Bergman. Leiter picked up the save for Philly. 5 to 3, the final at the vet. So at least. The Phillies have helped the Cubs cause today. Should this score remain the same? Mari Telemaco now starts to heat it up in the bullpen. With Pet Kaisek in the on-deck circle and the bullpen up and going once again. And it's Kent Bottenfield who's had very little luck against his former mates in this series. Took the loss in that thrill yesterday afternoon. The 0-2 is fouled away. One thing the Cubs have been able to do is keep out of Jeff Brantley time. He's only been able to warm up a couple of times in this series, and that's usually a good idea to not have to worry about him in the late innings. No balls, two strikes to the Cardinal catcher. And Terry just missed. One and two of the count. Other finals in the National League. Marlins one, Padres nothing. Giants got three in the ninth to beat the Braves 12-8. Arizona falls out Montreal 4-1, and the Dodgers pound the Pirates 10-5. The pitch is in the dirt 3-2. and two. That's over Colorado 5-2. And now Cincinnati over Milwaukee 5-3 in the top of the fifth. Jay Leno today, then Jimmy Collins on Tuesday. See the rest of our upcoming guest conductors. Saw Steve Sanders and Allison Payne last night at the Bozo Ball. He's excited. She's a little nervous, but she'll do a great job. Line right toward left. Henry plays it on the hop. Gaiety charges home. The ball not cut off. Put it to play. It's not in time. They couldn't tag him in time. And we're going to have a rhubarb here. I thought he tagged him before he touched the plate. it again and slow it down for you. Nice throw by Henry Rodriguez. And you don't have a very fast man in Gaetti. He comes streaking across. 
It looked like he tagged him right there before he got to the plate, but of course Riggs is going to lose this because it's a judgment call, and there's not much you can do. And it was very close. I mean, his foot was maybe two or three inches off the plate when the tag was applied. But the call goes against the Cubs, and they have gotten just about every break in this series, but we don't get this one. Watch it from a different angle. Scott Service thought he got him. But any way you look at it, right there, he's yep. got him with yep. his foot still up in the air. But in the photo, it was too close to call. They give the break to the Cardinals, and they've got a three-run lead with Willie McGee coming on to pinch hit and Jim Riggleman coming on to take out Terry Mulholland. So McGee announced Mulholland did not have his A game today. He's given up three runs so far on one, two, three hits. A couple of walks hurt and a Brant Brown error as well. So the Cardinals have McGee on. Amari Telemaco will try to retire him when we return after this. Two walks and an error have helped the Cardinals in this inning build a 7-4 lead. And now Amari Telemaco comes on to face Willie McGee. There you look at the numbers. On for the 12th time. 347 ERA. 0-1 record. And he inherits runners at second and third. Guerrero has driven his second Willie! run of the year. Finally getting one to fall. And now Willie will turn around and hit from the left side. And McGee is a pinch hitter. One of the best of the active pinch hitter. He didn't pinch hit much in his early days because he was in the lineup every day getting 175 hits a year for the Cardinals. And a ton of stolen bases, too. So McGee the batter, the Cardinals have broken this game open. They have a 7-4 lead. And Mari Telemaco fools Willie that time. Nothing and one. Don't know if there has been a more loved player in the last 20 years in St. Louis than this man, Willie McGee. The 0 1 pitch. It's even 1 and 1. Looking ahead to the Cubs half of the seven. It'll be the lower half of the lower third of the order. Hernandez service and then Manny Alexander. It's in the number nine spot. Second and third for the Cardinals. Those runners belong to Terry Mulholland. Bouncing ball right side. Grace off his glove. Morandini can't pick it up. Streaking around third is Marrero. Play at the plate. This time they got it. 3-4-2 the put out on Marrero at the plate. Kent does score, and the Cardinals have an 8-3 lead, and now 8-4 lead, and now it's Jay Leno time. Score a stirring rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball. Thank you very much. We thank worked for minutes on that. <laughs> thank you very much for doing that. It's a great tribute. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know uh, Grandpa really enjoyed his time with you, and, and well, I know he was it means... a great man, one of the great characters, you know, like Jimmy Durante or one of those great American characters and personalities you know that really makes the game something special well he had a great time what are you in town for we're in town doing our show me and kev are doing a show out at the rosemont theater kev has a pet peeve with baseball he's trying to get off his chest kev intentional walk oh you don't like the intentional no, walk i gotta do away with the intentional walk go head to head let's play man yeah. best guys in the world let's play some ball that's right get away with do away with that intentional walk. we gotta ask steve about that what do you think of the intentional steve what do you think of the intentional walk <laughs> To Mark McGuire, I'd just as soon walk him, Kevin. No offense to you, but I don't want to face him. Look at the size of that. No, no, that thing, you boy from LA to see him back. That's right. Come on. You can't have. You don't want to see. Uh, you want to see Hollyfield step in the ring, and I go, I pass. You can't pass. You got to fight the guy. Well, he did. He bit his ear off. <laughs> now, see, maybe you guys are going to bring us some luck. This is the first time oh, I think, Steve, that we've had a guest conductor when the Cubs have trailed. I mean, this has been the magic formula so far, so a lot of pressure on you, Jay. I think it's been a lot of pressure. pressure in winning games with the uh, with the guest conductor. I believe I believe we will turn it around. Now, who, who do you guys got coming on the show here in Chicago? Uh, oh, we got uh, tomorrow night. We got Heather Locklear and Oprah will come by, and uh, oh, Scotty Pippen will be there. Rodman will be there on Tuesday, and uh, we're gonna. 
<laughs> have Jerry Springer on and see what I... You know, he's changing now. Bolt the chairs we're, down. We're having the Born Again Jerry on. He stopped the violence, so we'll see if that works out. Bolt the chairs down would be my recommendation. <laughs> Buddy Guy's coming on later. Buddy Guy will be there. Buddy Guy will be there. I used to work with Buddy Guy. He's talking to oh, Buddy Guy. Is that right? 25 years ago, he all around the country. Yeah, so that was kind of be fun to go down to the club and hang out. Scott serves the batter. Jose takes off. Hit and run. Line drive right field. Jordan comes on. Dives. Can't make the play. Cubs have him at the corners and nobody out. I know, Steve, you love to see that kind of baseball hit and run, and Jordan almost spoiled the play. You know, Chip, for the Cubs because if Jordan catches that ball, it's two outs, and the Cubs in trouble as it is. Jordan had a shot. Has the ball hit the heel of the glove? All's well that ends well. Runners at the corners. Nobody out. Apparently, Mark Alexander really got to him. I think so. He just shook them up. Shook them up, running it over in his mind, and of course, distracted. Now, what I've really got to ask you is, I know you heard Steve Stone's rendition yesterday. Was there any extra added pressure after hearing Steve sing yesterday? No, actually, there was less pressure. Because I figured, you know, you can't screw up any worse than that. Manny takes a strike. It's nothing and one. Well, Bottenfield has not liked his experience at Wrigley Field. He liked it as a Cub. He hasn't liked it as a Cardinal. And the Cubs are hoping that continues. It is an 8-4 Cardinal game. They've scored seven runs in their last two innings. Here's Manny runners at the corners. Took a shot at right and fouled it off. Did you guys get your Beanie Babies today? Yes, we did. They were delicious. <laughs> I tell you, nothing like a Wrigley Beanie Baby on a hard roll. Boy, it is the best tasting thing in the stadium. And this Beanie Baby, I don't know. You don't know what a Beanie oh, Baby yeah. is? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> don't say that. The Beanie Baby folks will get really mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Beanie Baby. That's oh, right. Yeah. yeah, now you get it. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Too many Alexander. You were down on the field earlier when we were in Los Angeles filming some bits with the Cubs. When we were out on the West Coast, will we be seeing some of those vignettes on the show? Yes, yes, some of those vignettes as you show people. I thought, I, I thought I'd throw that Again, little broadcast. Again, I'm a working class guy, so I don't really vignette. Is that what you put on salad? Well, sometimes, yeah. yeah right, let me have the salad with the house vignette. I just wanted to prove that I went to college for nine years and thought I'd drop the vignette word on you. You college boy. <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Manny Alexander. They're at the corners here in the Cup 7. Again, he takes a shot at right. Who put Terry Mulholland up to hitting Mark Grace in the face with a pie during one of those vignettes? That's right, that's right. Yes. <laughs> You'll see that uh, probably Tuesday night. Oh, good. We have a thing with the Bears that's pretty funny tomorrow. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We All the teams have been great. You know, everybody's been terrific. It's a great town, uh, you know, I've done a few jokes about the Bears and about the Cubs, so they get a chance to get even with me this week. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a few. Just a few. All good-natured fun. Well, as the Hall of Famer Jack Brickhouse has said about the Cubs, and again, you know Jack recovering from his surgery, he said, hey, anybody can have a bad century. So maybe this will be the year the Cubs can uh, take care of that piece of business. Base hit right field. All right, Jay, you guys are bringing us some luck. First and second, yes. nobody out. Yes. The mere presence of Leno seems to have rejuvenated the team. <laughs> well, we work days, you work nights. If this keeps up, we're not going to let you leave. Dave Duck and the pitching coach out for the Cardinals as the Cubs have drawn a run closer here. And Lance Painter is going to relieve the Kent Bottenfield who faced three men. All three of them got hits. One of them has scored. And there's nobody out in the seventh inning. Guys, hang in there with us. We'll be right back and tell you about Lance Painter after this timeout. It's 8-5. Cubs have the tying run coming into the batter's box in Brant Brown. But it's a lefty-lefty matchup now as Lance Painter, born in merry old England, Pitches in the foggy Wrigley Field weather. Been around for the 14th time, the third in this four-game series, an ERA of 6.48, total of just eight in the third inning, and he's walked four, he's fanned eight, and he's in a peck of trouble. He's got runners at first and second. The Cubs have taken a run off that lead and looking for more here in the seventh. 
Brad Brown's going to be the man that faces Lance Painter. Jose Hernandez has scored the fifth Cub run. Scott Service, the runner at second. Manny Alexander with a very good at bat. Hit the ball to right field to keep the inning alive for the Cubs. So the top of the order now. Brown, Morandini, and then Sammy Sosa in the seventh. And this game is far from being decided. There's still a long way to go. And you wonder with nobody out if Brant would think about a bunt against the tough left-hander who throws a lot of sidearm curveball. Gaetti even with the bag at third. The Cardinals would love a ground ball double play chance here. Brown digs in. He's one for three today. And there is that sidearm pitch, and it's called a strike. You ever do the play-by-play -play thing? Did you ever do the play-by-play -play thing? No, no, I didn't actually. This is about as close as I ever came. <laughs> yep. Hey, Dave's got a great arm, though. Oh, is that him. right? Oh, yeah. Oh, and two. Throw lefty or righty? Uh, righty. He throw. He could throw right out. When you're in Hollywood, you're a switch hitter. It's just, a, <laughs> just well, you kind of have to be really to make it in that town. It's the only way you can do it. You know, that's a little more information than I can give you. Talking baseball boy. <laughs> Nothing in two to Grant Brown, the leadoff man for the Cubs. Two on, nobody out. One in the pitch. Did he check it? He did. He didn't swing. One and two. Who's your favorite person? you have interviewed on the Tonight Show. Oh, gosh, that's hard to say, actually. Uh, you know, it depends. I mean, sometimes there are people from different walks of life. You know, uh, having Schwarzkopf and Colin Powell was really exciting because they're not talk show people, you know. And it was great of them to come on. That was pretty exciting. Uh, oh, there you go. Brown pops it up. That's the infield fly rule. Clayton and Gaetti converge. And there's out number one. As Brown's retired. Mickey Morandini, the batter. He's tripled home a run. He's scored. And is 1-4-3 on the day. Has a three-game hit streak. And has really hurt the Cardinals. Six hits, six RBIs. A chance for a couple more here, Steve. A tough assignment for Mickey Morandini. Facing a pretty good left-hand pitcher. But you have to keep that front shoulder in against the curveballing left-hander. Let's see if Mickey can drive one home. Jay, we had the Duchess of Winter on yesterday, Sarah Ferguson. I know she was on your show. Did right. you enjoy the interview with her? Yeah, yeah. You know, we got her to sing Take Me Out of the Ball Game on my show. I can't imagine what, <laughs> what you guys did to annoy her. Because, gee, she sang it a couple of times and got up. And I thought, well, gee, you chip, and you, you guys must have screwed up somewhere. Well, she went out to dinner with Mark McGuire, and when she saw Steve, she just, Steve didn't compare. You know, he tried to get her to go to the Bozo Ball last night, but she had yeah. a previous engagement. Oh, what a tough break, huh? She was a Cardinal fan. We had to get her off the air quickly. She oh. likes Mark McGuire, and yeah, yeah. we kept intentionally walking him, and she was very bitter about that, like Kevin. <laughs> no, she didn't like the intentional walks intentional either, Kevin. Walks. Mickey swung at a bad pitch there, and he's behind two strikes. Nothing into the count. Cubs, first and second, one out. And you can see why Painter would be so tough. Brings that ball down from the side, and it sweeps away from the left-hand hitter. He went around that time, and he strikes out. So Painter has come on and has done a real job. But Sammy Sosa, a chance to tie it up with one swing of the bat. And out comes Dave Duncan on the run, and no right-hander up in the pen, so it's Painter against Sosa, but Duncan wants to make sure that he, he doesn't give Sammy anything to swing at. You don't think they would unintentionally walk him to face Mark Grace, lefty-lefty, with the bases loaded, do No, you? I don't. Just a thought. I think Kevin is right. No intentional walks, just go right at him. <laughs> mano a mano, challenge him. No room for crybabies in this game. Let's see if Sammy can hit another home run. Don Drive, instead of throwing four pitches, just hit him with one. <laughs> Save his arm. And Don did that on many an occasion. He was great. A very rude visitor to Wrigley Field earlier today. A Cardinal fan caught that home run from Sosa and threw it back. But the big right fielder of the Cubs would like to see it happen again. First and second, two outs. And Painter nearly hit it. 1-0. 
Well, guys, this rally is starting to fizzle a little bit. You got to get us going again. We've gotten us one run so far, but still some work to do. Two balls, no strikes. Now, Kevin, I get the impression that you are a big-time Cubs fan. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You got the shirt, you got the hat, you got the you beanie baby, you got the beanie baby. Two beanie babies, man. <laughs> two balls, no strikes. A little number right back to the mound. Painter Fields flips, throws low, but retires Sosa and the Cubs. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Have a great run here in Thanks Chicago. All the best, Jake. Right. Thank, thank you very you. much. Take care. We're through seven. We'll do. It's eight five. Cardinals have the lead after seven. On to the eighth inning we go. At the top of the Cardinal order will face Amore Telemaco, who will try to work his first complete inning. Here in the eighth at Wrigley Field, 8-5 your score. And Clayton swings at the first ball, flies it into shallow right field. Sammy Sosa is there, one pitch, one out. Again, our thanks to Jay Leno, our guest conductor for the seventh inning stretch today. He'll be in Chicago filming from Monday through Friday at the Rosemont Theaters, the Tonight Show, of course, on NBC. Great guests here in Chicago, Heather Locklear, Dennis Rodman, Aretha Franklin, Arsenio Hall, the Blue Man Group, Jerry Springer, and Cindy Crawford all scheduled to appear on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. A very nice man, and we wish him nothing but the best on NBC. I'm sure it will be a very entertaining week for him here, visiting our town, and loving it. Delano DeShields, the Cardinal hitter. Well, we talked several times, Steve, in the open of our show about how important it is to keep these Cardinal leadoff men in check. They had come in with only four hits in the first three games of the series. Today, Clayton has two. DeShields has one. So three hits today for the Cardinal table setters today. Also hit a couple of home runs, and they hit a few balls that might have been out on another day, but for the win. One and two. It's two and two. Some geese flying overhead, from left field to right field. Find the warm weather, guys, and send it this way. Morandini at second, and two down. Looking ahead in the Cubs half of the eighth, Grace Rodriguez, and then the pitcher spot is due up. And here's Mark McGuire with the bases empty. Today has walked twice. He has struck out twice. Two for nine in the series. And has walked now nine times in the four-game set. Amari fooled him that time. Nothing in one. I mean, as a hitter, you know if you're McGuire, they're going to challenge you with your best fastball. If you can pull the string like that, you can do that to him. Rolling two. No balls, two strikes, but be careful. He hit a two-strike pitch way out of the ballpark on that misty, foggy Thursday night here that I don't think anybody saw. But we sure heard it. He can turn a ball around on you in a hurry. One and two. Got him swinging. McGuire strikes out for the third time today, and the Cardinals out in order in the eighth. To the bottom half we go. The middle of the Cubs order will try to chip away at a three-run St. Louis lead. The two lefties will greet Lance Painter here to open up the Cubs eight. Mark Grace the first, and he takes strike one. Grace, Henry Rodriguez, and then a pinch hitter is due. Bob Patterson, I believe, working in the cup pen. Down the left field line, nothing and to the count to Mark. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Steve Stone should carry our entire crew from Wrigley Field. The Cardinals with a big comeback today 
have an 8-5 lead over the Cubs who led it 4-1 at one point. But John Mabry's pinch hit two-run homer tied the game. And then the Cardinals exploded for four in their half of the seventh. Grace, a slow roller foul past first. It's one and two. Jeff Brantley loosening in the Cardinal pen. Not seen him in this series. Hope we won't see him here today either. But if we do, let's beat him. Cardinals trying to avoid the sweep. Patterson got a key out yesterday. One ball, two strikes. What did Colorado Steve not see in Painter that the Cardinals did? And Rockies released this guy, and here he is with St. Louis. Well, I think St. Louis just was in desperate need of a left-hander and felt that Painter had experience, and they gave him an opportunity to see what they could get from him. And so far, it's been pretty good, at least in this series. Also, a little better place to pitch is St. Louis than Colorado. Two balls, two strikes. Laid off again. A walk would be nice. The count now full three and two. The payoff. Towards second. The Shields handles the easy one down. Henry Rodriguez, the batter. Henry won for three today with an RBI. The Cubs need three to tie. Milwaukee still losing at home. The Reds beating them in the top of the seventh inning, five to three the score. Mets, Dodgers, Phillies, Expos, Giants, and Marlins, all winners in the National League today. So there is ground to be gained. But if this score stays the same, it'll be the Cardinals who will be gaining it. Two balls, no strikes. Matt Miski's grabbed the bat. He'll pinch it for Telemaco. It's 3-0. The Devil Rays had a heartbreaker today. They were winning 8-5 in the ninth, and then Roberto Hernandez gave up five to the Indians in the bottom half and lost it 10-8. Mike Mussina got the win in Baltimore's game, 2-0 over Minnesota. Texas falls at Fenway Park. Pedro Martinez, the victory. It was a 2-1 final. How many strikeouts he had today? Full count, now three and two. Pedro had nine of them. He's 3-0, an ERA of 197 now for the Fenway faithful. And Henry asks for and receives time. Yankees pounding Kansas City 10-1. That game in the bottom of the ninth inning at Kauffman Stadium. Toronto 3, Oakland nothing. Ben Grieve is facing Woody Williams. <laughs> the 3-2. Did he go? He went, strike three call, and that's out number two. Well, Henry not very happy with that call, but Charlie Relaford did not hesitate on this sweeping breaking ball, and watch Henry. He thought he had checked his swing. Nothing doing, says a Relaford. And Matt Mieske announced... So Miski is announced, and he will pinch it for Amari Telemaco. And Cubs fans, here's your chance to donate to Cubs Care and look great in your new Cubs caricature T-shirt. The shirt contains the likeness of each Cubs player and coach, along with a copy of their signature. All proceeds benefit Cubs Care charities. The cost of the T-shirt, $17.95 plus shipping and handling. For order by phone, please call 888-430-CUBS. Double switch for the Cardinals. Jeff Brantley on to try to shut down Miski. We'll tell you about the other switch right after this.
double switch. David Howard takes over at second base for the Cardinals. Delano DeShields out of the game. And veteran right-hander Jeff Brantley seeking his sixth save of the year. On for the eighth time, a 257 ERA, but a total of just seven innings. And Matt Mieske faces him and takes a strike. Brantley, one of the more feared relievers a couple of years ago, but he's had arm trouble since. And coming back now, he can't pitch two days in a row, so they have to be very selective in where they're going to use him. Last year, he appeared in just 13 games. One and one. And when Brantley gave way to Jeff Shaw, Shaw became a dominant short reliever, and he remains that for the Reds. And Brantley trying to resurrect his career in St. Louis. That's something, just thinking off the top of my head here, I, I don't remember the Cardinals themselves grooming their own closer. They've always gone out to get that guy, be it Bruce Suter, Lee Smith, Dennis Eckersley. Ah, but you forget Todd Worrell. Todd Worrell, that's, that, but he was a starting pitcher. He was a starting pitcher in the minor leagues, but then they made him a closer because he kept kind of wearing out in the fifth and sixth inning and made him a pretty good closer. Two and one, Demiski, who looks for his first pinch hit of the year. That's always been a mainstay in St. Louis. No matter who it is, they have a guy that's going to shut the door for you. If you're a member of the Cardinal bandwagon. They had Al Rabowski, who they brought up, and I pitched against him as a starting pitcher in the minor league. And you're getting back in very 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 young <laughs> so that's why I was only 12 when I pitched oh, against him sure, at Gary and he was he was 25 that's why the matchups were very one sided the mad Hungarian he had a pretty nice career nice Fu Manchu mustache too two and two to Matt Miski Cardinals leading eight five in the Cubs half of the eighth and Brantley delivers Swung on line deep toward right center field. Jordan on the run at the track at the wall makes the grab and the side is retired. Matt hit the ball hard but Jordan caught up to it and it's one two three and out here in the eighth to the ninth we go St. Louis leads it by three. Cardinals bidding to avoid the sweep eight five here's today's Ameritech play that makes a difference. Lance Painter came into the game and Sammy Sosa in the seventh inning with a chance to pull the Cubs closer, but Painter makes a good pitch. Sammy taps it right back to him and Painter does a whale of a job getting out of the seventh. And that's your Ameritech playbook. Bob Patterson on to face Langford leading off the Cardinal ninth. Langford is one for four with an RBI today. Five for 15 in the series. Two runs batted in against Bob Patterson. He tries to hold him right there and see if the Cubs can come up with a big ninth inning rally. But I think if memory serves the last time the Cubs won a game when trailing after eight innings came against the Cardinals in St. Louis back in 96. It was a while ago. And Langford retired on three pitches. About 115 or so straight losses while trailing after eight but with the Cubs offense this season they will put that to rest in the not too distant future and hopefully today one out for Brian Jordan Jordan has had a big big second half of this ball game he's homered he's single he scored twice St. Louis scored four runs in the seventh three runs in the sixth and erased a four to one Cub lead. The big blow in the game was John Mabry's pinch hit home run in the sixth inning off Kevin Tappany. It was a four two Cub lead at that point. He tied it with one swing of the bat. You of the faithful have found warmer places to be at this point, but it was a huge crowd today. A little over 38 five, but it is getting colder by the minute. That misses outside. Dan Wilson of the Mariners just hit a grand slam off Frank Castillo of Detroit. It's 4 0 Seattle. They still bat in the first inning at the Kingdom. Fisted foul and out of play. This date in 1980, 
Former Cub great Ferguson Jenkins became the fourth pitcher in baseball history to register 100 wins in both the National and the American Leagues. He did it with Toronto beating Baltimore three to two. And that is some accomplishment. Bouncing ball right side. Morandini can't get there quickly enough. It scampers into right. And Jordan has a three hit day today. Also on this date, 1936, the Yankee Clipper made his debut. Jolton Joe DiMaggio had three hits as the Yankees routed the St. Louis Browns 14 to 5. But DiMaggio went on to have a pretty good career. If I'm not it's going to be a very difficult record to break, getting in 56 straight. Which do you think will be tougher, that one or the 61 homers? Well, I think they'll break the 61 homers before they break the hitting streak. Here's Guy Eddy. But the one record that will never be broken is Cy Young, 511 wins. Unless somebody pitches for 35 or 40 years, and I doubt that's going to happen. By the way, modern medicine's working. Maybe they'll find a way to <laughs> discover the fountain of youth. Gaiety pops it up behind first. Mark Grayson foul ground, has room, puts it away for out number two. It is amazing when you look back and flip through the history books of Major League Baseball to see guys winning 35, 41 games a year in the Major Leagues as pitchers and the home run totals. The guys that were leading the league Frank home run Baker hits eight or nine or ten home runs to lead all of baseball. The game really has changed an awful lot. Well, there was only four man rotations, and there was no such thing as a closer or short reliever. So guys finished everything they started, and they started pretty often. And the case now with the five man rotation and the closers and the middle men and the setup men, things are a lot different. And now. 200 innings makes you very durable. Years ago, it was 275 to 300, and they thought you were okay. And if you weren't pitching, you were expected to be ready for bullpen duty, and I'm sure guys picked up a lot of spare wins that way. David Howard, the former Kansas City Royal. Nothing and one. It's one and one. Oh, how about that? Three pretty good names in baseball history right there. Pete Rose hit his first homer in 63, and Tommy John his first win in 64. That ball belted into center field. Brown, though, has room, slides a bit, has to make a basket catch. David Howard hit the ball a long way. But the Cardinals retired in the ninth. To the bottom half we go. Cubs need three to tie here at Wrigley. Cubs need three to tie here in the ninth against Jeff Bradley and Jose Hernandez will try to get the party started here. Jose singled and scored in the seventh off Kent Bottenfield. He is one for three starting for the second time this year for the Cubs at third base. As Kevin Ory has found himself mired in a 12 game slump. The Cardinals on the verge of avoiding the sweep. And just in case Brantley has some trouble, their bullpen is getting busy. 8 to 5, St. Louis the lead in the ninth. And Brantley's first pitch is hit hard into the ground to short. Clayton surrounds it off balance. Low good play line. Clayton has had a very good defensive series. And that's a fine play. And fans, here's your chance to see the Cubs clubhouse, the WGN TV press box, go on the field in the dugout, and much more as the Cubs present exclusive tours of Wrigley Field. Enjoy a walk through the history of this beautiful ballpark. The donation $10 to Cubs Care. Call 312-831-CUBS. Tours start throughout the summer, beginning May 16th. Houston pinch hitting, one pitch, two outs. And now Manny Alexander. 
He came on to play shortstop in the seventh and greeted Kent Bottenfield with a good at bat, a solid single into right that scored Jose. The Cubs had him first and second, nobody out at that point. A run in, but then Lance Painter shut the door in the seventh. And now in the eighth and ninth, Jeff Brantley and company trying to do the same. The Cubs had scored four runs on six hits after three. Since then, though, the Cardinal bullpen's given up one run on three hits. They've been very, very tough. And for Tony La Russa, that is indeed a sight for sore eyes. Their bullpen has really had its problems this year. Maybe signs of them turning it around starting here in Chicago. One ball, one strike to Manny. If he can keep the inning alive, Brad Brown will bat. Tony La Russa looking to gain some ground in the central. The Astros have already fallen to the Phillies. The pitch. Two and two. Mark McGuire hit a couple of home runs in the series. But even Cubs fans have to be happy about that because the Cubs have taken three of four from the Cardinals. Two balls, two strikes. Manny down to his final swing, perhaps. And now time call. The 2-2. Two -two. High drive deep toward right. Jordan O slowing has a play. He's got it. And the Cardinals win the game by a final score of 8-5. They avoid the sweep and snap the Cubs brief three-game winning streak. Cubs take three of four, though, from the Redbirds. An off day tomorrow, then the Astros come a-calling. 8-5, your final. Back with totals and highlights from Wrigley Field after this.